Hello there Pixies! Have you ever wondered which Hogwarts houses the two Goldstein sisters from Fantastic Beasts would be in? Well, if you have, like I have, then why not sit and watch this video and see which Hogwarts house I placed Tina Goldstein in. If you haven't already, you can check out the video about Queenie up in the cards and which house I placed her in. And before I start, I just would like to get this out of the way. I am currently working towards a 1000 subscriber goal for this channel. This isn't a numbers thing, as I always say. I love all of my subscribers because you're all people, but it's purely a practical thing. It takes a lot of effort to make videos on YouTube, and I would just like to make a little bit of money on the side if I can, and getting to a 1000 subscriber goal will really help towards that. So if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it so that you never miss a video, but only if you want to. With that said, let's get into this. Tina Goldstein attended Ilvermorny School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and upon arriving there was sorted into Thunderbird House. Thunderbird House commonly represents the soul of a person. It's usually noted for its adventurers, and indeed, the founder of the house, Chadwick Boot, the son of Isolt Sayer, well, the adopted son of Isolt Sayer, was actually an adventurer himself in his later years and wrote a series of charms books. As Thunderbird is usually associated with adventurers, I commonly seem to associate it with Gryffindor House. I think it's the best representation for that house and of course JK Rowling herself was a Thunderbird and I think she exhibits a lot of Gryffindor traits. Now moving on to the wand, wood and core, it's actually currently unknown on Pottermore or anywhere else what Tina Goldstein's wand is made of. So I cannot really analyse her wand, core and wood and make an assumption based on the personality traits that are usually assigned to those wand woods, therefore that part of this little analysis is null and void unfortunately. So let's move on to the Hogwarts houses. First up we have Gryffindor. Gryffindor, as we know, is usually associated with bravery, chivalry, loyalty and passion, and usually impulsiveness. Now, as I've said before, you don't have to necessarily be very impulsive to be a Gryffindor. Neville isn't, and there are always exceptions to the rule. But Tina is a difficult one here, because Tina can be impulsive very rarely. Most of the time she's very sober-minded, very logical, very analytical, and she's not one to step into situations in general without being prepared. However, she does love to do the right thing. She will never ever not play by the book, which maybe you'd say is a different house, but I believe that because she believes what she's doing is right, and she believes in the procedure of things, that is very Gryffindor of her because Gryffindors overall value what is truly right. Also, she can be impulsive. When she sees someone, especially a child in need, she will go out of her way to help them, whether it jeopardizes herself or not. For instance, she went out of her way to save Credence from Mary Lou Barebone, even though she could have risked magical exposure. Now on to Ravenclaw House. Ravenclaw is commonly associated with eccentricity, creativity, out-of-the-box thinking, and of course, wisdom and learning. As far as I can see during the first two films of this franchise, Tina doesn't really exhibit very many of the Ravenclaw values. She's obviously going to be very smart because you have to be very learned and skilled as a wizard to become an Aura, but I haven't seen much creativity from her. She does tend to go by the books, although she does have good reflexes in a battle, but I suppose that's the Aura in her and less of being a Ravenclaw. She's not very eccentric, although she does do things her own way. I'd say she's more stiff in that respect, and she doesn't really want to stand out. She'd rather blend in with the crowd, I believe, and she wants to fit in. I, I don't see her not wanting to fit in. I think she's kind of insecure and wants to fit in more than not so. Whereas Queenie doesn't care if she fits in, she's doing her own thing regardless. 
Also, I get the impression that Tina isn't that accepting of people. She certainly wasn't really that keen on Jacob when she first met him, nor was she very keen on Newt for a while. I think it takes a lot for her to accept someone into her little group, or into her inner circle. So I don't really see the accepting side of a Ravenclaw either. Slytherin. Well, I think Tina exhibits a lot of Slytherin traits. Let's read them off, shall we? Slytherins are associated with resourcefulness, cunning, ambition, and pride in general. I think that Tina is very, very Slytherin. Now, I don't think she's entirely Slytherin, but on first meeting her, it's very clear she is extremely ambitious, she wants to be a career-driven woman, and Queenie says so herself. It's clear that she is quite cunning and ruthless when she has to be. She's ruthless with people, and she doesn't really take any nonsense from anyone. I believe she's probably very resourceful, because auras need to be resourceful in order to be good auras. Tina is also not very good in social situations, and I believe she doesn't really care if she is liked by others, even though she seems a little bit insecure sometimes, I believe in general she doesn't care what people think, she's going to do what she wants to do, and she will do it however way she sees fit. So I really believe Tina has a lot of strong Slytherin traits. As well as this, she's incredibly picky about who she lets into her inner circle. Newt had to work to get in there with her, and basically her inner circle consisted of herself and Queenie for her their entire lives. She doesn't get close to people and she doesn't trust people very easily. She didn't trust Yusuf Karma, she didn't trust Lita even though she'd never met her. She's just not that trusting. So I, I really think she has a lot of Slytherin traits. And now Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff is usually associated with fairness, loyalty, hard work and comfort. I think of all the traits of Hufflepuff that Tina possesses, I believe the only ones she really seems strongly to possess are hard work and loyalty. She's incredibly, incredibly loyal to the people she loves. I don't think that loyalty ever really wavers. And of course, she's very hardworking. She's a career woman and she worked hard to become an aura. Other than that, I don't think she's very idealistic. I think she sees the gritty reality of things a lot more than her sister. She's very pragmatic, and I don't think she really thinks fairness is the end goal. For her, justice is the end goal, and it doesn't matter if the justice is fair to everyone. Whereas Queenie definitely wants things to be fair for everyone. So for me, Tina just doesn't exhibit too many of those Hufflepuff traits. Overall, as I've been going through this in my head, first of all, I did think that Tina is a Gryffindor, but upon closer inspection, I'm thinking she might be more of a Slytherin, because yes, she values what's right, for sure, but I think her ambition and determination is really the strongest trait I see in her, and obviously we can't sort her completely because we haven't seen enough of her yet, but in my head, in my mind, I just see her as a Slytherin. A very good example of a possible Slytherin, but still a Slytherin nonetheless. If you agree with me, that's cool. If you don't, I would love to see what house you think she's in in the comments. My secondary house for her is Gryffindor for sure. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share around with your friends so we can get this conversation about the Goldsteins going, if you want to. And I will see you all next time, my dear pixies.